In the name of the God in whom we hope. Amen. For many summers of my childhood, my family drove back and forth between Dallas and Chicago for vacation, a 16-hour trip that was always accomplished in one day. This was before in-car videos and DVDs, so one of the games we played to pass the time was 20 questions, where one person thought of a mystery person and the other people had 20 yes-no questions to try and guess who you were thinking of. This particular round of the game that I'm remembering must have been about 20 years ago, and my parents and sister were stumped by my mystery person. Here were the clues that they got. Male, involved in politics, living, but never elected to office despite running. Eventually, they gave up. I probably have played as many rounds of this game as there, are hour, as there are hours I spent in that minivan. But I remember that round where Jesse Jackson, a local Chicago figure who was often on the nightly news and known to anyone who lived in Chicago, was my mystery person. Because I was so surprised to have been right about him. I kept thinking that I'd given wrong information in my yes-no questions, but sure enough, here was a person committed to change who ran and ran for public office, but never held it. I was planning on giving a different sermon today. I had one all written out and ready, but then Tuesday night happened, and I saw Jesse Jackson weeping as though he was old man Simeon in Luke, who sees baby Jesus dedicated at the temple and breaks into songs to God, saying that he can now die in peace. I was planning on giving a sermon on today's texts about how the end time is very far away, but then I saw Jesse Jackson crying at a dream realized, and I realized that the kingdom had snuck in. And I watched a woman interviewed on CNN who was standing in line to vote. And when the interviewer asked her how long she'd been waiting, she answered, about 200 years. And I heard Senator McCain's concession speech when he spoke of the so many millions of Americans who had once wrongly believed that they had little at stake or little influence in the election of an American president. I realized that I was standing smack in the middle of Psalm 78. I will utter sayings of old, things that we have heard and known that our ancestors told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. I was standing in the middle of a story of sayings of old, things that I have heard and known and that I now would tell to the generations to come after me. Theologian Karl Rahner says that we see God's work in the world only by looking back in history. Because by the time we realize that it's God, the moment has already passed. In looking back at this immediate past, I see God in that we had a fair and rather uncontested election in the midst of an economic meltdown and war. In the wake of many scathing political races in recent years, rife with accusations and embarrassments that spread like wildfire over the internet, many campaigns in this country were run honorably, and we witnessed a relative rarity in our world of a peaceful change. It is a story of peace and change like the story of God's saving work to the Israelites that they are told in Psalm 78 to teach to their children that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn and rise up and tell them to their children so that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. 